Hello and welcome to part two of the beginner's guide to yoga here in your movement practice. We'll be getting back on our mats today, moving around, opening up through the body. Um, this time it will be a much shorter practice. I know that the first one was quite long and very slow and we took our time. This will still be more gradual, but it won't be nearly as um, passive, I suppose. We'll be a little bit more active. I want you to start in tabletop. We'll come back to those cat cows. So really just opening up through the spine again. As you inhale, drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the chin, fingers spread wide, sit bones blossom open. And then as you exhale, curl the spine, look towards your navel. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, curl and round. Option if you'd like to, to keep moving with your breath up and down through the cat cows or to invite some intuitive movements here. So what I call baby bears. And they work best when you close down the eyes, you check in with the body and you enable the ego to move away as you move deeper into your own awareness and into your own physical body. So anything that feels good here, maybe wiggling the hips in figure eight, coming up onto the finger hips perhaps, fingertips perhaps, or maybe even taking the fingertips towards the knees and getting yourself a nice juicy rich wrist stretch at the same time. There's no right or wrong here. It should feel primal and open, feline, and somewhat feminine, animalistic. Mm. Use the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Sink back to a child's pose. The knees come out to either edge of the mat. Hands come forwards. Fingers spread wide and forehead melts down to the earth as the hips melt down towards the heels. Take a full breath in. Take a full breath out. As you look forward, we're gonna slide the hands forward, melting the heart down as the hips lift up above the knees into Anahatasana, puppy pose, heart melting pose. Remembering to breathe into the belly. Inhale. Exhale. Move forward into Sphinx Pose. Bring the hips down towards the earth and the forearms stay where they are. Fingers stay spread and active. Energetically draw the elbows into the body. Roll the shoulders down the spine. Engage through the core. Lift the knees and plug the corner edges of the feet, the pinky edges of the feet in towards the earth. Lengthen through the back of the neck, so you'll be looking between the hands just above the mat. Inhale. Exhale. Full breath in. Full breath out. So sphinx, sphinx pose looks rather, I guess, lazy almost, but it's actually very active. Every muscle is switched on and engaged. And then release all the way down. Allow the elbows to come out. Come up onto the fingers top edge of the mat. Elbows stay up. Inhale as you lift the heart, lift the chin. Exhale all the way down, elbows stay lifted. Inhale, come up. Exhale, melt back down. Again, option to close down the eyes. Inhale as you come up, look over your right shoulder. Exhale through center. Inhale, look over your left shoulder. Exhale back down. On the inhale, option for up dog if you feel open enough. Planting the palms by the chest, coming onto the tops of the feet, knees and thighs lift, heart open. And then exhale, roll over, tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. 
take some time, walk the dog out, take it for a walk through the park, a walk along the beach maybe, shifting the weight from one foot to the other, bending through the opposite knee. Keep pushing through the palms of the hands as the underarms roll in towards one another across the front of the chest. Take the feet out, maybe as wide as the mat, and then walk the hands in a couple of steps. This is what I like to call our baby elephant. From here, you can just wiggle the hips side to side. Feel it opening up through the backs of the legs, through the hamstrings. And then walking all the way back out. Finding your high plank. Shoulder stack above the wrists. Slight bend in the elbows. Push the floor away, inflate through the upper back and lengthen through the back of the neck. Tuck the pelvis gently under and engage through the core. Energetically draw the toes towards the palms and feel that engaged through the core, through the center of the body. Full breath in, full breath out. Drop the right knee to the ground, extend the left foot back and come onto the blade edge of the back foot. Inhale, the left hand goes all the way up into a side open. So this is kind of like a, a side plank variation. If you wanted to modify or to intensify, you could stack the feet on top of one another, or you can choose to keep it nice and gentle and just open up through the left side body. Maybe you'd like to stay here or maybe even challenge the balance and start to lift up the left toes. Feel that engaging through the hip, through the hip flexor, through the glute. Inhale. Exhale. Take a full breath in. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. Last one. Inhale. Exhale, all the way back down. Find a narrow knee, child's pose. Sink the hips to the heels, the belly to the thighs, and the hands reach forwards or back. Full breath in. Full breath out. Tuck the toes and lift up into your high plank. Find that Goldilocks position, that happy spot where you're strong and active, stable and supportive. And then dropping the left knee down to the ground, bringing the weight onto the blade edge of the right foot. And as you inhale, the right hand will peel up towards the sky. Spread the wings, fingers active and spread. Again, you can take your variation. So if you'd like to find Full side plank, Vashistasana, finding side plank, or allowing the left knee to stay down, maybe actively lifting up the right foot. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe try to close the eyes, challenge the balance, and feel the sensations move through the body. Inhale. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale, back to, to tabletop position. This time coming up onto the fist. So make fists as if you're about to punch something, never someone. Tuck the toes and push back up into your high plank. Inhale. Exhale. Full breath in. Exhale, come back to the hands. Inhale, up to the fists, knowing that you can always lower down the knees. And exhale, back to hands. Inhale to fists. Exhale to hands. Full breath in. 
Exhale, back to narrow child's pose. From here, we'll find a seal pose, allowing the hips to come down towards the wrist. Opening up through the heart, rolling the shoulders down the spine. Activating through the thyroid, through the throat, by allowing the head to gently melt back. The knees are spread here, hips towards the earth, knees lift. Or maybe you'd like to bend the knees and allow them to come up towards the head. Just like you did in primary school. And then finding your way back to child's pose, knees spread wide. Inhale, roll forward to seal pose. Open up the heart. Exhale, push back, child's pose. So the knees stay kind of where they are and the feet move in and out as you move forward and back. So inhale, feet spread, hips lower, heart lifts. Seal pose. And then exhale, toes come back in, hips come back to the heels, child's pose. Inhale. Exhale. Beautiful, getting in touch with the body and the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Come back up through tabletop, tucking the toes, lifting the hips, downward facing dog. Adha Mukha Svanasana. It's a Sanskrit for our down dog. Inhale, three legged dog, raise the right leg to the sky. And then exhale, tiger curl, knee to nose, stack the shoulders above the wrists as the right knee keeps hugging in towards the chest. Maybe even give the right knee a little kiss. Hi, how you doing? And then inhale, extend back up, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Push the floor away, shoulders stack above the wrists. Inhale, extend. Last one, exhale. Inhale, exhale back to downward facing dog. Find your down dog and then shake out the head. Shake it yes, shake it no. Inhale, left toes rise, three-legged dog. Exhale, tiger curl. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forwards, and step or jump towards the top edge of your mat. If you jump, try to move lightly, keeping the arms straight. Stack the shoulders above the wrists as you move forward. And then inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise all the way to stand. And then exhale, hands to heart. Bring the toes to touch, heels slightly apart. And as you inhale, we'll find our Utkatasana, our chair pose. So depending on how you feel, on that day, in this moment, you can be on a bar stool, kind of really high upright. You don't really feel like going too deep or too far. A little bit deeper, bringing the heels, the weight into the heels. Or maybe down on a regular chair, toes lift. Energetically draw the knees together and spread the glutes apart. And then energetically draw the knees apart and hug the glutes in. Feel that stabilizing. Palms reach up, facing one another, fingers active, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart, palms pressed together. As you inhale, lengthen through the torso forwards, through the back of the neck. And then as we exhale, we're gonna find a twist. So taking the left elbow to the outside of the right knee, palms stay at the center of the chest as you start to lift the left side of the chest up towards the sky. Inhale, exhale, 
and then inhale back to chair. Exhale, straighten the legs, hands to heart. Full breath to reset. And let it go. Let's find our other side. Inhale, back to chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, lean forward, lengthen through the back of the neck. And as you exhale, hook the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Draw the hands to the center of the chest and roll the right side all the way up. Look down at the knees and you'll find that the right knee probably has a tendency to want to move forwards. And if that's the case, pull it back in in line with its friend. They're best friends, they're little twins. They always want to be together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale to chair. Exhale, hands to heart. Close down the eyes, one hand to the heart space, one hand to the belly. And taking a couple of deep breaths. Eyes closed down. Connect back to what's important. What is your intention for being here? What is the language and the way that you speak to yourself? Is it kind and nurturing, forgiving, accepting? Or is it critical, judgmental, doubtful, negative? Without feeling judgment or pride for either of these things, simply notice, become witness, and then consciously choose to make a change if you know that it will help to heal you. Yoga is a tool for us to use on our own personal path, our own personal evolution. Blinking open the eyes. Inhale back to chair pose, Ukkutasana. And then exhale, hands through heart, hips lift, folding forward, Uttanasana, shake the head out. Inhale, halfway lift, fingertips to the earth, to the shins, or again to a block. And then exhale, plant the palms, step or maybe you'd like to jump back into your high plank. Inflate through the upper back, inhale. Exhale, optional, lower the knees down, keep the elbows hugged into the ribs, hug them in as you engage through the core and lower all the way down. Inhale, baby cobra, or up dogs there if you'd like to invite it. And then exhale as you lift the hips, downward facing dog. Inhale, right toes to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, tiger curl. Inhale, extend, three like a dog. We'll just do that one this time. And then as you exhale, step between the hands. Lift up through the heart space, maybe come up, up onto the fingertips. And this time, turn the back heel flat. As you inhale, we'll rise to our warrior one. So warrior one and crescent lunge often get confused. Crescent lunge, the back heel is lifted and the black back heel is plugging towards the back edge of the mat. In warrior one, the back heels turn flat like it is in warrior two and the hips are moving towards the top edge of the mat. So if you find that maybe your hips are really far out, like mine tend to be, I need to consciously be aware of that. Spread the feet a little bit apart so that they're almost on train tracks rather than staggered. And then allow the hips to open and draw the feet closer in together, shorten the stance and then allow the hands to rise. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, open up warrior two. Heel toe the back heel back. Look down, make sure that the front heel is somewhere near the center of the back foot. Bring the weight into the blade edge of the back foot and then sink into the front knee. Allow the right knee, the front knee, to splay out towards the right edge of the mat so that you can see the first two toes. 
relax through the toes, plug down through the heel. Another thing to keep in mind when you're doing your warriors is you don't want to be bending too much so that your knee is stacked in front of the ankle. If that's the case, just simply bend up a little bit or maybe move the foot further away from the body if you're too far in like this. Take the foot forward so that the knee is directly above the ankle. Reach the fingers apart. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale as you flip the front palm, reverse the warrior, paint the sky, right hand goes up, left hand goes back down towards the back foot. And then exhale, hands frame the front foot. Turn up onto the back heel, come up onto the back toes. And then as we inhale, we'll lift up the right fingertips towards the sky into a twist. Inhale. Exhale, hands come down, frame the front foot. An option to step back through your vinyasa or straight back to down dog. If you're coming into vinyasa, you might like to try a one-legged variation if you feel like you've got the strength for it. Raising the right leg up as you hinge forward, shoulders stack in front of the wrists, elbows stay tucked in as you lower down into your chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Both tops of the feet on the floor, open the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, reset, let it go. <sighs> Inhale, left toes rise, three-legged dog. Exhale, tiger curl, just one, lean forward, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. And then as you exhale, step between the hands, lift up through the heart space. Come up onto the fingertips and this time turn the back heel flat 45 degrees. On the inhale, we'll rise, warrior one. Roll the shoulders down the spine, create some space here between the shoulders and the ears. Maybe the corner edges of the mouth can lift up. Jeez. And keep pressing the weight into the blade edge of the back foot. Full breath in. Full breath out. Embody the warrior, inhale. As you exhale, warrior two. Fingers spread. Maybe readjust the feet if you'd like to. Again, wade into the blade edge of the back foot. Plugging down through the front heel and then drawing both heels together so that you find and feel that lift up. Relax the shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, flip the front palm, reverse the warrior. And then as you exhale, hands come down, frame that front foot, turn the back heel up, come up onto the back toes. And then on the inhale, left fingertips rise, twisted lunge. Inhale. Oh, twist is so good. Exhale. Twists are amazing for detoxing and rinsing. Inhale. Exhale, plant the palm down. Step back through your variation of vinyasa. Option this time again for one legged chaturanga. The left leg lifts up and back, hinging forward. Exhale as you lower. Inhale through up dog. And exhale down dog or child's pose. Taking three long, slow, deep breaths. Everything that we do in yoga is done for a reason and there is so many benefits to every single pose but when you teach we don't often teach the benefits or tell you the benefits because once you've heard them once it's kind of assumed knowledge um, but with so many different people coming to different classes all of the time and online it's really hard to know who's heard what and who understands what. And so coming back to the basics, um, it's a nice practice for me as well to remember why we do these poses and how they can feel and help and benefit us. Not only in our practice, but in our life. Walking the hands in towards the torso, hips towards the heels. Readjusting or taking a breath if you need to, taking a sip of water perhaps. 
It's hot in this shirt, I'll tell you that. Whew. Taking a moment for yourself to recalibrate. And then if and when you're ready and willing, walking the hands back out. Tucking the toes, lifting the hips, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look forwards. Step, jump or float, top edge of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, fingertips to the earth, to the shins or to a block. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands rise all the way to stand, Urdhva Hastasana. And then exhale, hands to heart. Take the hands to the lower back, feet at hip width. And here you have two options. The fingers can face down towards the earth or up, whatever feels more comfortable. I prefer up just because I feel like it opens through the shoulders a little bit more and you might find that too. So whatever's more comfortable. From here, we're gonna draw the shoulders together across the top edge of the back and then draw them both down towards the earth. Engage through the core, lift up through the kneecaps and then gently press the hips forward as you lift the heart up. As if someone's wrapped a string around your chest and is pulling you up from there, all the way up, all the way up. Keep lifting, inhale. Exhale, back to center. Option to curl the spine, bend the knees and push the hands forward. And then inhale, back up. Exhale, to reset. We'll find one more, choose your hand position. Inhale, draw the shoulders together, bend the knees. And then gently pressing the hips forward again, lifting the heart, inhale. Exhale, hold. Full breath in. Exhale, back to center, maybe take the hands forward, curl the spine, bend the knees. Inhale, back up. And exhale to reset. Beautiful, a gentle little back bend. We'll take a dancer's pose. Bring the weight into the right foot, right hand to the sky. And the left foot kicks up towards the glutes. Here you have the option to take the hand to the outer edge of the foot, draw both knees together, push the, the left hip forward, engage through the left glute and open up through that front hip flexor. If you want a more intense variation, maybe start to kick the back foot up and just stopping here. So this is a beautiful dancer's variation. If you would like to, you can flip the grip, take the hand to the inside of the left foot. I like to take my thumb to the bottom of the big toe. Inhale. And then as you exhale, keeping the heart upright. I don't want you to bend forward like this. It's not about getting the leg high at the back. I want you to keep the chest fully upright. Maybe even take the hand to the heart and then kick the back foot up. Keep the chest lifted, keep the heart lifted. Inhale. Exhale, maybe extend the front fingertips. Keep lifting up through the heart. Full breath in. And exhale, gently release. Shake it out. Whew. Well done, you're a dancer. And we'll find the other side. Bring the weight into the left foot. Left fingers towards the sky. Kicking back, grabbing onto the outside of the left foot for option one. Drawing the heel to the glutes and opening up through the hip flexor. Choosing to stay here or maybe kicking back. Option two, flipping the grip. Hand comes to the inside, the inner edge of the right foot. As you inhale, lift up. And then exhale, maybe the hand comes to the heart. Keep lifting up through the chest all the way up. Full breath in. Full breath out. If you hop around, don't worry about it. It's a dancer for a reason, because you're dancing all over the place. And on the next exhale, gently release. Shake it out. Inhale, hands go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. And then exhale, rolling back. Onto your backs. Ah. We'll take a gentle bridge, a heart opener, 
Soles flat on the ground, soles of the feet flat on the floor. Knees up towards the sky. Feet at hip width. And then reach down and tickle your heels with your fingertips to make sure they're at the right, right distance away from you. As you inhale, press down through the heels, tuck the pelvis, and then begin to lift up through the base of the spine lifting the hips and then rolling up one vertebra at a time and as you do that we're going to raise the arms up and over the head so when the hands reach the floor at the top edge the hips will be all the way up energetically draw the knees together and press down through the heels and then exhale slowly gently we'll lower the hands and lower the hips one vertebra at a time curl the spine unfold unfurl like a flower opening up in spring. Inhale as you rise. And exhale, lower back down. One more, inhale. Exhale. Beautiful. We'll take a supported bridge option. So on this next inhale, the hands can stay down, the hips will lift, energetically draw the knees together. And then there's two ways that you might like to use the block. One way is to place it between the thighs and then keep drawing the knees together to hold the block up. Push down through the heels and lift the hips, lift the heart. It's an active version. Or a more passive restorative version is to take the block on any height you like, I prefer it on the tall height placing it underneath the sacrum. So that flat part just above the, the buttocks, maybe choose to stay, or perhaps even extending and opening up through the hip flexors by straightening the legs, knowing that the block is there to support you, to hold you, and it's got you completely. Again, noticing that inner dialogue. What language do you use when you speak to yourself? And is it as kind and gentle as it could be? Bending the knees, placing the soles of the feet back down, lifting the hips, removing the block if you had it and rolling all the way back down. We'll take a knock knee position, feet come out to either edge of the mat. And from here, allow the knees to fall in on top of one another, like a teepee, one hand to the belly, one hand to the heart. Mm. Heart openers, any kind of back bend, they're all very powerful poses because they allow us to be the kind of vulnerable that I don't think we get in any other way. It's the mix of emotional, emotional vulnerability and physical vulnerability. It's the opposite of the fetal position. It's saying, here I am, I exist, take it or leave it. Having the capacity to do that takes a lot of courage. And whether or not you realize that you're doing it at the time That is exactly what you're doing. And I want you to give yourself a little bit of self-love, a bit of gratitude for having the ability to do that, to be vulnerable, to show up and to exist unapologetically. We'll take a gentle inversion. Inversions are great towards the end of our practice. 
especially the gentle restorative ones. So option one is happy baby. Grabbing the outer edges of the feet, allowing the knees to come into the underarms and then rolling the spine back down to the ground, pulling the shoulders together and lifting the heart space. An inversion technically is anything where the hips are higher than the heart and the head. However, happy baby is an equally amazing alternative to a restorative inversion. Option two, if you would like it, is to grab the block again. Viparita Karani, taking the block underneath the sacrum and it will rest there, creating a little ledge for you to rest on. So the feet can stay up towards the sky without needing much effort at all. Dorsiflexing the toes down towards the face. One hand to the heart space, one hand to the belly, or allowing the hands to come out wide. And just to exist, take up space. Connect to the breath and enjoy it. Viparita Karani, known as Fountain of Youth, is known for its restoring benefits and its anti-aging effect, actually. They say that if you stay here long enough, you will begin to physically anti-age, which I think is pretty cool. But also not exactly the best quality of life if you're upside down like this for the whole time. <laughs> I'd rather get old and get wrinkles. Option to stay here. Or if you feel comfortable, we'll take a shoulder stand. Rolling up, the knees come to the forehead and the hips lift up towards the sky. The hands will be on the lower back, palms flat on the back rather than just the fingertips. Or if you feel more comfortable, maybe the hands can wiggle down towards the lower ribs. From there, we can begin to extend the feet up towards the sky if you feel comfortable. So hands to the lower back, knees to the forehead, hips go up. Beautiful. So from here, option to stay if that feels nice, or maybe beginning to extend the feet all the way up. In this position in candlestick, a lot of people think they're there when they actually look a lot more like this. So if that might be you, I want you to begin to extend the toes all the way up, all the way up and open up through the hips. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe write your name with your toes. And then we'll draw the knees back in towards the forehead. Release the hands. Melt the spine back down towards the earth. Hug the knees into the chest. Wrap the forearms around the shins. And give yourself a loving little squeeze and hug. Maybe rolling side to side. Hmm. And then rock and rolling up and we'll find a comfortable seat. In a studio yoga class, I will always teach a Shavasana or an optional seated meditation. However, in these online classes, I am going to keep it optional for you knowing that a lot of, a lot of the time people don't have as much time um, and they want to be able to move on their mats and then get on with their day. And so I would totally invite a Shavasana at any and all times throughout any day, um, especially after yoga practice. In a studio, I actually say that any time that you skip Shavasana, a unicorn dies and you don't want to be responsible for that. So do your Shavasana. Um, but that's more so it doesn't disturb other people in the room if you're getting up and leaving when they're in their Shavasana. If that is something that you would like to invite, please feel free to lay down. A general guideline for Shavasana is about 10% of the length of the class. So if you did a 60 minute class, you should do about a six minute Shavasana. Obviously you can always do longer because Shavasana is your best friend. Thank you though for sharing your practice with me. Thank you again for Coming back to something that you know is going to be slightly intimidating or daunting or challenging, something that's going to help you to expand and blossom open. Thank you for coming back to part two and for being open-minded, open-hearted to, to learning, to understanding that it is a process and that you aren't just going to wake up overnight and 
um, be fluid in your movements and your awareness and your practice and it is a slow but beautiful journey and I am honored to be here to be a part of your unfolding and take your hands to your heart space take a deep breath in through the nose hold the breath at the top As you're holding the breath, drop the shoulders down the spine and feel the heartbeat in the chest. And then open the mouth and let it go. One more like that. Inhale, fill up completely, expand the belly. Hold. Exhale. The corner edges of your mouth can lift in deep gratitude and thanks in honor and in celebration of this beautiful blessing, this opportunity that we were given, even the hardships and the obstacles it's all opportunity disguised as challenge in order to help us to grow. Everything about your existence, about this universe conspires for your expansion. With the hands at heart space, Sanjali Mudra. Bow the head to the heart, the chin to the chest. And together we say, Namaste. Remembering that the meaning of Namaste is that the love and the light, the power, the universe inside of me honors, respects, sees, acknowledges and loves the light inside of you, inside of all of you, inside of all others. Ubuntu, I am because we are. That is the most humbling and beautiful thing to remember, especially at the end of a yoga practice when I'm just filled with happiness and magic, pure joy. It feels like it bubbles out of me. And hopefully you're feeling the same way. So I'll see you on your mats for part three very soon. Love you.